Okay, yes. Okay, thank you for your introduction, Harald. So um, this is a joint work with Uzi Perek and uh, Holger Boche. And I thank, of course, the organizer for this, uh, the organization of this conference. And uh, also Uzi, my co-author, he is uh, at the Slack. So if you have short questions during the talk, he can answer it in, in the Slack immediately. I, I think uh, Anka told me before there's some uh, slight uh, delay in the transmission. So sometimes perhaps it's good then to, to ask just questions in, in the Slack. So we make good experience with this uh, in a conference in March. So uh, what we want to consider, we want to consider a broadcast model. So we have one sender who want to, uh, to transmit to two receivers. Uh, the sender is called Alice and we have here Bob one and, and Bob two, and we will consider classical channels and we want, uh, will consider quantum channels. And the uh, uh, special thing is that uh, Bob one and Bob two shared an entangled state here. And the first reason why we considered this is because uh, last year there were a result for the dual channel where you have two senders and one receiver, that's a multiple access, ch access channel, where it was showed that uh, then uh, sharing an entangled state at the, um, uh, at the senders, it increased the capacity even for the classical model. And we want to find out if this is also the case for, for the dual, because there are a lot of uh, results where you have the same capacity, like for the Gaussian channel, um, Gaussian broadcast channel with a total power constraint where the capacities are, are the same. Um, then the second, then we also look at the case when we just have conferencing between uh, the two uh, decoders between Bob 1 and Bob 2. Uh, that means they can transmit classical bits uh, with a certain capacity. And the third scenario we, we look we look at is the scenario if um, we have uh, the, this classical conferencing and also the uh, shared entangled state. And then, of course, we can do quantum conferencing. That means we can teleportate from Bob 1 to Bob 2. And um, then we can consider the case when uh, Bob 1 is only helping Bob 2 uh, to receive his message. So that means uh, Bob 1 don't have a goal to receive something. He's just helping them. And then in all three, uh, scenarios. So Bob one is somehow acting like like a relay, and in the last scenario I told you when we can teleport uh, the state from Bob one to Bob two, uh, then we have somehow here uh, uh, then Bob one is some kind of a repeater uh, sending something to Bob two, and here uh, the direct connection connection between Alice. And Bob two is somehow the repeaterless um, connection, and we can, can compare uh, how we can use them and what we have to, have to use. Um, so first, I want to to start why we need quantum repeaters somehow. So in general, uh, attenuation in optical fibers poses a great challenge for long distance quantum communication. Uh, protocols because we cannot amplitude uh, the signal in quantum communication. And we have this uh, application, a quantum key distrib uh, uh, distribution, and there we want to distribute a key. And um, then we can use this key as a one pet encryption. But therefore, we, we need to uh, run this protocol over long distances. And so we need um, shared uh, entanglement uh, via long distances. And uh, we uh, have a recent book on quantum networks uh, where we also look at uh, general quantum networks and how shared entanglement can be used also not for QKD, but to increase capacity and uh, to use it for identification and other things. So somehow it's just a mostly theoretical toolbox which can be used now, uh, which can be found in, in, in this book here. Um, one potential solution to solve this problem are quantum repeaters, which were introduced by Briegel et al. 
1998. And the idea is that the distance is divided into smaller segments with quantum repeaters at intermediate stations. And um, Harald is also part of uh, several projects running from the uh, BMBF, where the goal is really to finally build someone, um, a demonstrator of a, of a quantum repeater. And there we, are, we have uh, several platforms, quantum dots, trapped ions, and diamond color centers. And there's also a, a white paper, which is called Extending Quantum Links, um, which can be also found on, on archive, where you can already see what is uh, possible and uh, how far we are. <laughs> And uh, this project ended now in, in July, this Cooling X it was called, and it will be continued as QAX. And uh, so the people will now go, the physicists will now go in, into the field. Before they were more, uh, more working in the labs, so this project started already in 2010, I think, and a lot of basic research was, was necessary uh, to arrive the status we, we have now. Um, so uh, why is straightforward uh, amplification not possible? That's because of the no cloning theory. That means universally copying of quantum states uh, stands in violation to quantum mechanics. What is the short idea of the quantum repeater of the first generation, what, what we want to realize somehow in, in, in this project? Uh, the idea is this year should be the quantum repeater which have two states, P1 and P2. And here is the sender, and here somehow is the receiver. So this is Alice, and uh, this is Bob. So we want to use quantum communication and entanglement distillation uh, to prepare uh, a state, an entangled state, between the sender and the re receiver this year, between A and P1, and um, uh, um, entangled quantum state between the repeater and the receiver, this state here between P2 and, and B. And then uh, the uh, repeater teleports the quantum state P1 onto B1. Um, uh, so, they, so we have a swapping of the entanglement. And then fi finally, A and B1 are now entangled at, at twice the distance. So that's roughly speaking the idea of a quantum repeater and then uh, the final idea is to have an um, 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 entangled state over long distances to have many uh, repeaters in, in this line and create in this way um, entanglement. And then you can run the QKD um, protocol, for example, or also other protocols. Um, just to give you an idea uh, about information theory, so normally, uh, also in classical channels, uh, the communication uh, relies on error correcting codes. So that means we have a noisy channel. So in classical communication with some probability, uh, if you send a bit with some probability, you receive the correct bit or with another pro uh, probability is the wrong bit. And uh, so to, to have error free, or near error-free communication, you need to introduce some redundancy. So you, you need to introduce error-correcting code, codes to reduce the probability of decoding error. And in information theory, then you look at the coding rate. So K is uh, the number of information bits which you can, can transmit, and N is the number of transmissions uh, you need for this. And uh, Shen, in his uh, work in 1949, um, uh, he gives uh, a formula for the classical case, the channel capacity, and this is just the highest communication rate if uh, the number of transmission goes to infinity and the uh, error probability goes to zero. And this is a really nice formula. It just is a, a single letter formula, which is easy to compute with uh, of, about the mutual information. So it's a simple single letter formula. So uh, for the capacity for quantum channels, we have different categories. So first we can think about just to transmit classical uh, um, information uh, over the, the quantum channels. And therefore we get the classical capacity. 
This was done by Hollybo in 1998 and Schumacher and Voss Westmoreland in 1997. And this is transmission of classical bits using a quantum channel. Of course, what you can also do, we want to transmit qubits, so quantum bits about, over the quantum channel. And uh, this, uh, the, then you get another capacity, that's the quantum capacity. Uh, this was done by, by Lloyd Shaw and, and David Tuck. But unfortunately, you get a multilater formula. That, that means um, you, you remember our uh, n goes to infinity. So, and we, so we have to normalize by one over n and we have to calculate the limits. And this is always difficult to, to, to calculate. But, but it gives you at least it gives you some 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 lower bounds, of course, if you don't uh, uh, calculate the the limit there. Um, then there is the idea of Bennett to use the entanglement assisted uh, the entanglement uh, to calculate uh, the entanglement assisted capacity. And uh, first thing is that uh, what he shows that we get a strictly higher capacity. And the nice thing is we get uh, like in Shannon's case a singulator formula. And uh, even in the, um, so, but in the classical channel, it is shown also by Bennett in the same paper that the entanglement resources do not help. So that means the entanglement resource always means that the sender and the receiver shared an entangled uh, state and can use this uh, for communication. Uh, then there was uh, last year the somehow surprising result that uh, entanglement resources between two transmitters can uh, increase the uh, achievable rates. That means uh, the MAC, as you remember before, that's the dual um, channel of the broadcast channel. So we have two senders and one receivers. And even in the classical case, if we have uh, an entanglement resource of the two transmitters, um, uh, the uh, capacity increase. And uh, the idea comes from Nutzel, Winter, and Quack and Shaw. So they, they use um, a channel which is defined by the by a pseudo telepathy game, like the CSHAS game. And uh, there are some related works to our work. So first, this are, is a related work that somehow the classical version. If you look at classical broadcast channel with cooperation, so the degraded case was uh, solved by Dabora and Servetto, and the non-degraded case by Steinberg, and there are several other uh, papers uh, which consider quantum network channels and and uh, some resource resources. You can I uploaded in the Slack our paper, and there you find uh, more references. So we, as I already told you in the beginning, we consider now a quantum broadcast channel in different settings. So we will start with entanglement resources at, at, the, two, at the two receiver. Then the second thing, we do classical conferences, conferencing. That means receiver one can send a classical message to receiver two. And then we do quantum conferences. That means receiver one can teleportate a quantum state to, to receiver two. So, and then if receiver, we also uh, consider the primitive relay channel. In this case, receivers, the goal of receiver one is not to, to uh, receive a message. He just serve receiver two and help him uh, to receive his message. So the first observation is there's a, a trade-off between repeater edit and repeaterless communication. And we will show there's a bottleneck behavior of the repeater. So perhaps shortly to remind you, uh, a quantum state is a vector in a Hilbert space and a qubit is just a zero state here or the one state or it even can be in superposition. And uh, two states are entangled if we cannot write the joint state as a, a tensor product of the single state. And the maximal entangled state, I think you know this, is, is this one here. And um, now uh, we, we can define the von Neumann entropy like we, we do it in the classical case. And then we can also define the, the conditional entropy. And if you are used to, to work with information theory, you, you will remember that this in information, classical information theory is an identity. So you define normally the conditional um, entropy by, by, um, by averaging over probabilities. That's not possible here. 
And so one uses the identity here of, uh, as, as a definition. Um, in this case, if you look at, uh, at this maximal entangled state here, the entropy of it, because you know, know everything, so the entropy measures somehow the ins, uh, insecurity of the state, is zero. But if you look at the, um, the states of A and B, then it's one because with probability one half you, you get zero or one if you measure it. But that means that the, in this case, the conditional entropy is minus one. So that's very special in quantum information theory because in classical information theory, the uh, conditional uh, entropy never can be negative. Therefore, uh, we introduce a special name for, for this. So the so mutual information is, um, is defined as, as usual. And this one here is called the current uh, information. And um, a quantum broadcast channel, we want to look at this now, uh, is a linear, completely positive, trace-preserving mech corresponding to a, a quantum physical uh, evolution. So we have an input state here, and uh, the output state is this joint state state here, and Bob 1 have access to, to the system B1 and Bob 2 to the system B2. So let's first start with our first uh, case. The first case is, is if uh, Bob 1 and Bob 2 shared an entangled state state here. And uh, what is now a classical code for the quantum um, broadcast channel with degraded message set. So it's called 2K0, 2K1 encode. So that means we have uh, two index sets. Uh, one goes from one to two to the K zero and the other goes from one to the two to the K one. And we have this encoding map where M zero and M one are the common and the private message respectively. So that means they, they both want to uh, recover the, uh, the common message and pop one also the, the private message. And we have as, as a resource this pure entangled state here. And we have two, two measurements of receiver one and receiver two. One is denoted by lambda and the other are denoted by, by gamma. So uh, how is the communication scheme? Alice uh, chooses a common message M0 for both users and a private message M1 for Bob, and then prepares the state here and transmit mid the state. And the output is that Bob1 and Bob2 receive their states B1N and B, B2N here. And um, they, Bob1 combines it with this shared uh, entangled state and per per perform the uh, measurement lambda. And similarly, Bob2 can perform his measurement gamma on his state and the shared uh, entangled state. And then we, we can calculate the probability uh, the error probability that uh, the decoding is wrong. So the coding rate, again, we have two rates here. We have the common rate, that's K0 over N, and the private rate, that's K1 over, over N. And um, we call a rate pair R0, R, R1 achievable uh, with the entangled encoder. If we have a sequence of, uh, of codes, such the proper error probability, goes to zero for all M0 in this set and all M1s in, in this set here. And the channel capacity is defined as a set of uh, achievable pairs with the entangled encoders. And the first question I, I ask in the very beginning is, um, there's this duality of the broadcast channel and the multiple access channel. And um, we have this result from last year that uh, entanglement bet between the two um, transmitters can strictly increase the achievable rates, even in the classical case. And the first question is, does the dual property hold? And the answer, perhaps it's obviously, so it's not so difficult, is no, because uh, somehow it's clear if you do it for a Mac, then, the, then you have some influence uh, or correlation with the channel. But if you do it for the broadcast channel and you have the entanglement at the, at the receivers, there is no influence to the channel at all. So I think you cannot expect something. And so we also proved that the channel, uh, that the capacity reason of a code of a broadcast channel with entangled decoders is the same as without entanglement resources. 
now let's go to the second uh, setting. So we we look now at the case if we have conferences. So um, now Bob One is allowed to to transmit some classical bits um, with this rate C12 to Bob Two. So he has the set here and can transmit something with this rate to to Bob Two. Then we can define this this rate region here. So I have to. And uh, you see here, uh, this is typical for, for the broadcast channel where you use auxiliary variables. That's also how we get this region here. And but we can bound the cardinality of our auxiliary ren, uh, of our auxiliary uh, ren, uh, vari random variables. Sorry. Um, so x zero is bounded by 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 this cardinality, and x one is uh, the cardinality of x one is bounded by this cardinality here. And uh, then our result is that the classical capacity region of the quantum broadcast channel with conferences and degraded message set is uh, given by, by this capacity here. Unfortunately, as you see again, you have a multi-letter formula. The good thing is, if you just look at the Hadamard broadcast channel, that's a generalization of uh, the degraded classical uh, broadcast channel, then we get a single letter formula. Then we get just this result here. And the ideas are very similar, like in the, so some, the, the achievable part is similar to, to classical coding. So it's a classical construction. So we use superposition uh, position coding and binning. And the bins are indexed by the conference method G. And we use a quantum packing lemma, the square root management uh, man, a measurement, and an idea of my co author, which he used uh, in 2020, that, uh, that he do some gentle measurement, use some gentle measurement lever to perform consecutive measurements without collapsing the output. Um, now we uh, we do some quantum conferencing. So that, that means now, from now on, we all assume that we have both. We have this uh, shared entangled um, state, and we also have quantum conferencing. And uh, therefore, uh, Bob 1 can teleport a quantum state to Bob 2 at this conferen uh, conferencing rate here. Because we have this, uh, we have restrict here um, our classical rate, which uh, can be used by Bob One to send information to Bob Two. So the re uh, so because of the no cloning, the receivers cannot recover common quantum states, and so thus we have to consider two private message M1 and M2. And here you see the, the measures are different. These are qubits by transmission, and these are qubits by transmission. See a classical bit spike on transmission because this is the rate uh, for for the classical conferencing, and this is how somehow the rate um, for the teleportation. Um, also, uh, a more general sub uh, space transmission is possible. So quantum communication is also referred as entanglement transmission and can be extended to strong subspace transmission, where the entanglement between the message system and the environment is also uh, recovered. Um, so, and, uh, this, and also what we can do is entanglement generation, but by the monogamy of a property of quantum entanglement, it's not possible that Alice can generate a maximal entangled state with Bob 1 and Bob 2. But what Alice can do is she can generate a GHZ state like here, we have it before in the talk also. And uh, also the other possibilities, she, she can use two, two uh, auxiliary states and uh, generate an um, entangled state um, between Bob one and one entangled state between Tor and takes a tensor product of them. Um, and our theorem is now, um, that uh, we have the following achievable rage region here. So in terms of coherent uh, information, and here you see again, we have this auxiliary uh, systems here, A1 and A2, like we have the auxiliary random variable in the, in the, in the classical case. And the observation is um, that the rate region reflects a greedy approach. Uh, we are using the conference link to, to increase the information rate of user two. They, that means we, um, if we, if Q, Q1 is equal to the, to the current um, information between the auxiliary system A2 and B1, B2 plus delta, then, then we have here for Q1 this um, 
current information minus, minus delta. So the next observation is for classical information, uh, the optimal performance is, is uh, achieved using a superposition coding, as you see before, where receiver one can recover the message of user two uh, without uh, losing rate. But for the quantum uh, scheme, it's not uh, involved superposition. So without conferencing, it is impossible for receiver one even to decode the message of user two. Otherwise, we have a contradiction to the, to the no cloning theory. And the third observation is the setting um, of the conference decoders imposed uh, a con uh, con chrono uh, sorry, chron chronological order. First, Bob, two, Bob one receives um, his tape B, B1 to the end. Then Bob one sends a conference message to Bob two. And at, at last, Bob two received his state B2N and sends a conference message. And hence, Bob one can recover the stage of M2 and send it to Bob using the conference links while, while destroying then his day, the state in his location. We also have an outer bound um, for, for this. Perhaps I have to go a little bit um, faster. So, and now uh, this, the last thing is now what we can do is uh, in all the settings, we, we can say the goal of, of Bob one is not longer to, to receive something. He just want to act as a relay. So he just want to support uh, Bob two to receive his uh, his message. So his task is only to help uh, the transmission of information to Bob two here. Then you have some kind kind of of relay relay here. So and then uh, we can do this for for the case. Let's now just consider the case where we have uh, this um, quantum confer conferencing here. There we have a cut set upper bound here. That's uh, this one here. And we have a decode uh, forward lower bound. Um, that's this one here. And the third idea somehow comes from Mario Berter that uh, we have an entangled formation lower bound. And uh, in this case, uh, this proof is just uh, so the achievability is based on, on channel simulation. So somehow uh, there's a channel simulated going uh, over, over the re relay. And uh, the ob observation is, so we can use an LS Bob 1 Bob, uh, and Bob 2 as sender, repeater, and destination receiver. So the, re the repeater is somehow the quantum version of a relay. And our uh, result shows a trade-off between repeaterless communication and relaying information through the repeater. So if you look at the decode uh, forward lower bound, then this term here is somehow the the, the link which cor corresponds to the repeaterless communication because that's the link which goes directly from the uh, from the sender um, to uh, Bob two so from Alice to Bob two and uh, why why this link here correspond to the quantum transmission via the via the repeater so but here you need uh, you see also the bottlenecks. Uh, uh, flow because uh, we have the serial connection between sender repeater link from A to B1 with a re uh, repeater receiver link from B1, B2. So the throughput is now dictated by the smaller rate. You see here, this is somehow the, the, the quantum conference rate. And this somehow here is the rate which can be uh, sent from, uh, from the sender uh, to, to Bob1. Okay, so oh, so I, I did it in time. So uh, thank you for, for listening. So if you have questions, please ask. Yeah, thank you, Christian. Um, please ask your questions on Slack uh, because I still don't see any. So please ask them. Uh, for the time being, honestly, I mean, you said that you have some uh, gain in the information transfer now between sender and the cooperating receivers, but I mean, isn't there not already more information sent from the sender? Because I mean, now he, the sender sends to two pops. Yes, but but what you can 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 see there is uh, what you one could assume in the beginning is that one should always take the, the better thing. So you can can uh, think that you always should use a better better channel to transmit data. But if you then, then analyze it for examples, you see sometimes a combination is, uh, is even better and give you bet, better rates. So sometimes it's better to, to use uh, 
so you have uh, I don't know where where is the formula uh, um, no Oh, okay, uh, I don't find. But sometimes it's better to to use the repeater link and also the the direct uh, connection. Even if one if one of them is worse, to 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 get a, a better total rate. So somehow the the repeater um, connection can always can also increase the the total capacity. Even if 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 uh, if um, it's uh, it channel is worse than than the main channel. That means mm -hmm. you. You can use it to to increase the capacity. That's somehow. And so, and and your derivation already then includes also the communication between the two bobs because I mean, yeah. I mean yes, I guess yes. I guess that's in the game then as well as an additional amount of communication. Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, so so because you you have additional this communication, but but that's the, the reason. So what, what I call the bottleneck here is is uh, is here. If of course if this. Um, you have um, a capacity be between this uh, between this two bobs somehow, and a capacity between Alice and 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 Bob one. And there, of course, you have to you have to take uh, you have to take the, the the minimum because otherwise it's not possible. And but even if this both are are, are rather than the other one, it sometimes it's also good to to you to use it so and to increase the capacity. Okay. Um... Yeah, I still don't see questions on the Slack. Uh, Anka, if you see questions, then please help me how to use Slack. Uh, but um, yes, in any case, otherwise, then I would like to invite you to the round table. So please, then we can close this session. Thank you. Thanks to the two speakers, to Klausia and Christian. And uh, we can meet now. We have to leave this room and we'll meet then on the on the uh, on the round tables see you there ciao Just a short, eine kurze Frage. Die Round Tables, die erreiche ich jetzt über diese, dieses äh, Board da oder wie, wie komme ich da über die Plattform? Ah, nee, da kommt jetzt ein Link. Ah, okay. <lacht> Danke. Das ist aber auch ein Zoom-Link oder wie? Das scheint auch ein Zoom-Link zu sein, ja. Ich klicke da mal drauf, dann werde ich wahrscheinlich hier rausgeschmissen.